back already with part five of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, TLV. And I had to abruptly end it because I didn't realize uh, the last part because I didn't realize how how far over that I actually was. And I hope it does upload. We were getting really close to that 25 minute line and I don't think it will upload past that. Um, so I needed to end this. Um, I, as, as we ended this, we were probably about halfway through this, that um, Adonai was basically letting, letting um, Assyria know that no, he was, he was in control. And because Hezekiah prayed to him, um, that prayer was answered. Hezekiah didn't turn to man, he turned to God and God actually came through and was basically had the word for uh, Senator dem demise and, and also saying that, you know, he was going to turn him back the way that he came. So we're going to pick up right here um, from that point. So this shall be the sign to you this year. You will eat what grows by itself in the second year, what springs from that. But in the third year, you will sow replant vineyards and eat their fruit. The surviving remnant of the house of Judah will take root downward and bear fruit upward. For from Jerusalem, a remnant will go out, and survivors from Mount Zion, the zeal of Adonai Sevaot, shall perform this. Therefore, thus says Adonai concerning the king of Assyria, he will not come to the city, or shoot an arrow there, or come before it with a shield, or throw up a siege ramp against it, by the way that he came, by the way he will return, and he will not come into this city. It is a declaration of Adonai, for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake, for my own, and for my own, and, and, the, and for my servant David's sake. Then the angel of Adonai went out and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. When the men arose early in the morning, behold, they were all, they were all dead corpses. So King Sennacherib of Assyria withdrew and returned home and stayed in Nineveh. It also came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of his god Nisroch that his sons Adremelech and Serezer struck him down with a sword and escaped into the land of Azarat. Then his son Esarhaddon became king in his place. Very interesting um, how God came through for um, for Judah um, through the prayer, the sincere prayer of Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. So God, God came through for them. Chapter thirty eight. Put your house in order. In those days, Hezekiah became mortally ill. So Isaiah the prophet, son of Amos, came to him and said to him. Thus says Adonai, put your house in order, for you are dying and will not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to Adonai. He said, please, Adonai, remember how I have walked before you in truth and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then it came to pass the word of Adonai came to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says Adoniah, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer, and I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add fifteen years to your life. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. Now, this will be a sign to you from Adonai that Adonai will do his word. He has spoken. Behold, I will cause the shadow on the stairs which went down with the sun on the sundial of Ahaz to turn back ten steps. So the sun shadow went back ten steps on the sundial on which it had gone down. A writing at King Hezekiah of Judah after his illness, when he recovered from his illness, I said, In, in the prime of my life, I am to enter the gates of Sheol. I am deprived of the rest of my years. I said, I will not see Adonai, Adonai in the land of the living. I will look on humanity no longer among the inhabitants of the world like a shepherd's tent my dwelling is pulled up and carried away from me like a weaver i rolled up my life he cuts me off from the loom from day into night until night you make my end i 
I stilled my soul till morning. Like a lion, he will break all my bones. From day till night, you make my end. Like a swallow or a crane, I whisper, I moan like a dove. My eyes are weary looking upward. Adonai, I am oppressed. Be my security. What should I say? For he has spoken to me. He himself has done it. I will wander about all my years because of the bitterness of my soul. Adonai, by such things men live, and my spirit has, has life in them too. Restore me to health and let me live. Behold, it was for my own shalom that I had great bitterness. You have loved my soul out of the pit of destruction, for you have flung all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they praise you as I do today. A father makes your faithfulness known to his children. Adonai will save me, so we will play my songs on stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of Adonai. Now Isaiah has said, let them take a cake of figs and apply it to the boil and he will live. Hezekiah said, what is the sign that I will go up to the house of Adonai? Chapter 39, Hezekiah shows off. At that time, Merodach Beladan, son of King of Beladan of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that he had been sick and he and had recovered. Now Hezekiah was with them, so he showed them his treasure house, the silver and the gold, the spices and all the and the precious oil and his whole armory and everything that was found in his treasuries. There was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. That was a big mistake. Um, you know, after God had done for him to actually show all of that to the foreigners was not a good thing. Then Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the prophet came to King Hezekiah and asked him, what did these men say and from where did they come to you? Hezekiah replied, they have come to me from a far country, from Babylon. Then he asked, what have they seen in your house? Hezekiah said, they have seen everything in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I didn't show them. Then Hezekiah said to then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of Adonai Sebaoth. Behold, days are coming when everything in your house, which your fathers have stored up to this day, will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says Adonai. Moreover, some of your descendants who will issue from you, whom, you're, whom you will father, will be taken away and will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, the word of Adonai, which you have spoken, is good, for he thought, for there will be shalom and security in my days. Very interesting, um, King Hezekiah. You know, he had been very ill, and he trusted um, and, and got his healing because he, he had faith that, that the Lord would heal him. And he cried out to the Lord with his whole heart, and God did heal him and gave him 15 additional years. But Hezekiah was prideful, showed off all his treasures in his house. And the Lord said, in the future, all of that's going to be carried off to Babylon. Chapter 40, Comfort, Proclaim Good News. And this speaks of Yeshua. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak kindly to the heart of Jerusalem and proclaim her to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, for she has received from Adonai's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai, make straight in the desert a highway for our God, for our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMashiach. <laughs> every valley will be lifted up, every mountain and, and hill made low. The rough ground will be a plain and the rugged terrain smooth. The glory of Adonai will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of Adonai has spoken, a voice is saying, Cry out. So I said, What shall I cry out? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, for the breath of Adonai blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower, flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Which means 
people will come, people will go, but God's word will never go away. God's word will stand forever. Get yourself up on a high mountain, you who bring good news to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, you who bring good news to Jerusalem. Lift it up, do not fear, say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Look, Adonai Elohim comes with might with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense with him, before him. Like a shepherd, he tends his flock. He gathers the lambs in his arms, carries them in his bosom, and gently guides nursing ewes. That is our Yeshua. Who is like him? Who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand, or measured out? measured out heaven with a span or calculated the dust of the earth in a measure or weighed the mountains in, in scales or the hills <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> or the hills in a balance who can fathom the Ruach Adonai or instruct him as a counselor with whom did he consult or who instructed him who taught him in the path of justice or taught him knowledge who informed him about the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and count as a speck of dust on the scales. Behold, the islands weigh as fine dust. Lebanon is not enough to burn or its animals enough to for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. By him, they are accounted null and void. To whom then will you liken God? To what likeness will you compare him? To an idol? A craftsman casts it, a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions sil silver chains for it. One too poor for such an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He looks for a skilled craftsman to prepare him an idol that will not totter. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? He sits above the circle of the earth. Its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the skies like a curtain, spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He reduces princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth a confusion. Scarcely are they planted. Scarcely are they sown. Scarcely their stem takes root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither. And a storm carries them off the stubble. To whom then will you liken me? Or who? is my equal says the holy one lift up your eyes on high and see who created these the one who brings out their host by number the one who calls them all by name because of his great strength and vast power not one is missing why do you say o jacob and assert o israel my way is hidden from adonai and the justice do is do me escapes the notice of my god have you not known have you not heard Adonai is the eternal God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow tired or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives strength to the weary and to the one without vigor. He adds might. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But they who wait for Adonai will renew their strength. They will soar up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. He who waits in the Lord. Uh, will be restored, renewed. There's so much in that in that chapter. And I'm sorry, I was losing my voice there for a minute. I thought I was going to have to pause again. In verse 3, it says, The voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Adonai, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And as we move forward into the Brit Kadashah, when John the Baptist in Matthew 3, verse 3 says, for he is the one Isaiah the prophet spoke about, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Adonai, and make his path straight. So there is the, the, there is the confirmation of Yeshua being the Messiah that was spoken about by the prophet Isaiah. Very powerful um, proof. And then we move ahead in Luke chapter 3, also um, verse 4, as it is written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet, 
the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai and make his path straight. And it continues um, in verse 5, Every valley shall be filled up and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all humanity shall see the salvation of God. Everyone will see Yeshua. So that is that is also, um, in, a, also in Luke there, um, it's being stated. In Mark... Uh, chapter 1, verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of Adonai and make his path straight. It, um, I'm going to go back to also to verse 2. I want to include that. So I'm going to read again Mark 1, but I'm going to read verse 2 and 3. Behold, I send my messenger before you who, who will prepare your way. And that was speaking of John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Adonai and make his path straight. And in the fourth gospel, we have more confirmation here. I'm going to start with chapter 1, verses 22 to 23. So they said to him, Who are you? Give us an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And this is John the Baptist speaking. Make straight the way of Adonai, as the prophet Isaiah said. And I'm going to continue this because this is really important. Now those sent were from the Pharisees. They asked him, if you're not the Messiah, Elijah, or the prophet, why then are you immersing? I immerse in water, John answered. Among you stands one who you do not know coming after me whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. These things happened in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was immersing. In John 10, verses 10, Yeshua says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So that is 10, uh, John 10, verses, verse 11. First Peter chapter one verses twenty two to twenty five also say, "Now that you have purified your souls in obedience to the truth, leading to sincere brotherly love, love one another fervently from a pure heart. You have been born again, not from perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and enduring Word of God. For all humanity is like grass, and all its glory like a wildflower." The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was proclaimed as good news to you. Remember, um, in Isaiah, Isaiah stated this, a voice is crying out, cry out. So I said, what, what shall I cry out? All flesh is grass and all its loving, loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, for the breath of Adonai blows on it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. And the last footnote for this is Revelation 22, 12. And it reads, Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to pay back each one according to his deeds. And this is also seen in Isaiah chapter forty. Verse 10, look, Adonai Elohim comes with might with his arm rolling for them. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. And continuing on, like, continuing on like a shepherd, he tends his flock. He gathers the lambs in his arms, carries them in his bosom, and gently guides nursing ewes. So that's the end of chapter 40. No one is greater than our God. No one is no one is greater than Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm going to pause this now. And actually, because it is at 19, I'm going to pause this now and come back with the, with the next part.